In this example, for finding the sum of two rational expressions, we have a binomial divisor and a trinomial divisor. Regardless of how complicated the divisors might look, our process remains the same. We factor each denominator, we look for those common factors, and we form the least common multiple slash least common denominator so that we can add these two rational expressions. Factoring the first denominator, we see a common factor of four, which leaves behind a difference of squares that can be factored a little bit further. In our second denominator, our trinomial denominator, we see a common factor of six. Once that six is removed as the common factor, that leaves behind a perfect square. Further factoring that trinomial as x minus two times x minus two. Working with this denominator and this denominator, we're gonna create our least common denominator or least common multiple. We start with the constants, four and six, their least common multiple is 12. So we're gonna call this our common denominator. Looking next at the factors, we see the presence of an x plus two and then nowhere else. So we know that x plus two is gonna be involved in the denominator. Then we get to the tricky part. Here we have an x minus two, and here we have two x minus twos. In order to get these to match, we go with the highest power of every factor. So x plus two only appeared once, therefore we need it once. But x minus two appears once here and twice in that factorization. So when we write our common denominator, we're going to need two x minus twos. Will that make for slightly more complicated multiplications in order to in order to create the common denominator? Sure, but that's the necessity. We need all of the components of each of the denominators to appear as a factor of the common denominator. So rewriting our two expressions, we're now going to work with this new common denominator of 12 x plus two x minus two squared. And we're gonna do that for both of our rational expressions. Looking at the first rational expression, we compare this new common denominator to our previous denominator. We see that we're going to need, in addition to the five that was already in the numerator, an additional factor of three, because four times three makes 12, and we're gonna need an additional x minus two to cover for that extra x minus two that was in the denominator of the other rational expression. Coming over to the second rational expression, we're gonna start with the six. We're gonna need an additional factor of two so that the six can get to the 12. The six that was in this denominator can become 12. And then I need an additional factor of x plus two because this denominator already has the two x minus twos, I just need to give it that x plus two that it doesn't have. Multiplying, simplifying with the common denominator, we're gonna have 12 x plus two, x minus two squared. From the, first, from the first rational expression, this is really 15 times x minus two, so that's 15 x minus 30. This is really 12 times x plus two, which is really 12 x plus 24. Combining in the numerator, the common like terms, we have 27 x minus six over 12 x plus two, x minus two squared. You're almost at the answer. We're almost at the most simplified version. One last check of the numerator for a common factor, which it has, it has a three. So we can remove that three. And the advantage of leaving the denominator already factored is that I don't have to worry about doing it again. I see the three simplifies with the 12, leaving behind a four, which gives me a final solution of nine X minus two in the numerator and then the denominator of x plus two and x minus two squared. 
I wanted to keep all of this on one screen instead of flipping to another one because I wanted you to see the level of detail that needs to go into creating and adding these linear, or excuse me, these rational expressions. We started up here by identifying the factorizations of the two denominators. So we factored the two denominators. We looked then for our common denominator, and then we used that common denominator to create numerators that could be added together. We looked for the missing factors from each denominator. What did I need to get from this denominator to that denominator? And what did I need to get from this denominator to that denominator? I incorporated those factors in each of the numerators. And then after that, it's just basic algebra simplification, making sure we take the extra step at the end to redo any factorizations of the numerator so that we can simplify and simplify a little bit more.